You may be wondering why I'm showing you an empty room today. But this is the beginning of the winter rearrangement of furniture and cleaning and all the things that I do before holidays. Uh, so I've evacuated Studio A, you know, the big room of my house. I've evacuated all the equipment out of here. I've, I've kind of cleansed the floors, even though in this morning light I can see that there are little dusty footprints everywhere from coming in from outside. So I'll have to re-clean one more time to, to really get things shiny and new. Maybe I should step back a moment and say why, aside from cleaning, why do I keep rearranging my studio? And here's the thing, is if you're anything like me, and hopefully you're not, because I have a disease, and that is to never be comfortable. I am never comfortable in any arrangements that I make. Every time I put furniture or keyboards or, or desks or anything in a place that I that I think are going to be optimum, it usually lasts about three weeks and I've got to move something because it's just like, I don't know, it's not ergonomic or it's inconvenient or whatever thousand excuses I need to make to not make music. But this time, really, <laughs> November 18th, 2022, at 7.52 in the morning, I am making a statement that this is it. This next arrangement is going to be it, I think. Maybe. We'll see. I got a little inspired to do this uh, based on a couple of recent videos that I watched from some of the people I follow. There was a video a couple of weeks back from uh, Venus Theory about why your studio sucks <laughs> or why you can't stand your studio. And he hit the nail right on the head and that is either having too much stuff or or just it not being in the right place, or clutter, or wires everywhere. I mean, it really kind of spoke to exactly what some of my frustrations are with my own studio setup. So I'm hoping to clean things up and minimalize. I mean, I'm not gonna ever minimalize. I've got 12 keyboards uh, <laughs> and a lot of other outboard gear, but at least I can get close to having something that I don't have to tear the entire room apart to clean the floors. That's probably my ultimate goal here. Uh, the other video I saw, which was hugely inspiring, of course, Cinematic Laboratories is ripping the roof off his entire house, it looks like, and building himself an actual lab. So, hey, my heroes are redoing their studios, so why not redo my own? What's coming in the post, I don't know how long it's going to take to get here from Germany, but I did order a couple of Jasper's keyboard stands, some of those A-frame stands, uh, on wheels, mind you. I was shopping for keyboard stands when all of a sudden there was one listed with wheels, and I got so excited I almost wet myself. Couldn't order them fast enough. <laughs> so they're coming from Tommen over there in, in Germany. They're not here yet, but I'm going to start this renovation today. Hopefully they'll get here within a week or so. so. I'm basically just going to walk you through how I put things together. Consider this also maybe a studio, a studio tour, because you're going to kind of see how, you know, what I've got and how I use it and how I hook it up. So in this house that I've lived in since 2009, uh, that piano has always been here because it kind of fit perfectly. And that's where it's been for 13 years. I slid that over out of the way uh, because modular is going to fit beautifully right here. So uh, that's where modular is going to go. And I had this brilliant idea a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to mount a camera, a camera arm here in the ceiling and then mount two little colored lights here. Hopefully uh, that is going to work. So we'll, we'll find out. So that's going to be the first project while this room is empty before I put anything else in here because I'm going to be raising some dust. So let's mount that camera arm and the light articulating arms. There's three articulating arms I'm going to put up there. And let's hope that there's some, let's hope there's something to screw into up there. <laughs> we'll find out. All right, let me reposition the camera real quick here so I can show the actual angles here of the house. This is about a 28 inch deep and about 66 and a half inches across. So that means when I find my, my mark here, what, what my center is going to be, my center is going to be 33 and a quarter if we're being accurate. So that's going to be right here, right, right there. And then this articulating arm will mount in the center here. Now, 
my my OCD is gonna have a big problem with this, but you know, I can't put it over here. That won't be, <laughs> that won't be right. So I'm, I'm just gonna have to suffer with it being right here. So this thing being four and a half inches wide seems to fit perfectly between these little beads. Um, I'm hoping that there's beadboard and drywall and then a, a header. I'm kind of hoping there's a, there's a two by four up here holding this, this house up. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mark where my holes are gonna be with this. Times like this one, I wish I had more than one hand. You do have more than one hand. <laughs> So there are my four little holes. What I want to do first is take a very small drill bit and just pilot these and make sure that there's actually something to hold this up. So before I start drilling all willy nilly, I'm going to take this little awl, this little hammer right here, and I'm just going to tap. Mm, that doesn't feel very stable at all. <laughs> that doesn't feel. I mean, what I mean is this feels a little, a little squishy. So let me try one of these holes. Let me try the one up front here first. Ah, yes. Okay, two by four is here, that's good. Let's try this here. Well, there's something up there. I don't know what it is, but there's something up there. All right. So that turned out nice. I'm just gonna use these, uh, these regular little sheetrock screws because this is wood and then there's sheetrock and then there's wood up here. So I'm hoping this is going to be long enough to anchor to whatever's up there. If not, I've got longer screws. All right, here we go. Ruining the house 101. Let's go forward. So there's, there's stuff to bite into up there, that's good. Uh, I'm not gonna hang any super heavy cameras from this because that would probably be asking for trouble. Things like the GoPro, the iPhone, uh, possibly my old, my old Canon HF10, anything that's pretty light. I don't think the uh, Black Magic, that guy there, I don't think that's gonna hang off here. All right, so now let's cinch these up carefully, not to strip. All right. All right. Normally I'd use a hand screwdriver for this, but I'm lazy. All right, that sucker is up there. This is the actual articulating arm part. This is going to fit in here. And then this bolt kind of holds it in place. This little arm, if I loosen these guys, you can see how this kind of articulates when I'm not using the camera. These arms should be able to fold up out of the way. Oh, hey, you know what? Look at that. That's, that's, kind, of perf that's kind of perfectly out of the way, isn't it? Huh, look at that. I'll take it. All right, screaming along. Uh, the next thing, the next thing that I want to mount is going to be 
these smaller articulating arms here. Uh, this is gonna go up here, probably in this corner, because this is where I wanna mount the, uh, the small lights. So if I have this mounted like this, And then I can put, put the lights in, in various positions. They're not, not super long. They're just meant to splash light on the walls or on the modular or, or whatever I have here. And it could be any color light that I want. Right now it's my, my red and blues. So I think this is where these are gonna go, right here. Maybe, a, maybe an inch or so off this wall. Uh, on this side, I've already got a a spot here, track lights, but I can take that off. Uh, and I'll probably put one here as well. So let's mount those up. I think. So there's a, here's a little dot. Here's a little dot. Here's a little dot. All right, little little trio of dots there. Let's uh, pre-sync our pilot holes here. That's a little loud, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Pre-drill my hole. Beautiful. All right. Take this single one back here, and this is going to go in first. Come on. All right, right here. So whoever invented this is a freaking genius because it's one it's one nut and it tightens here here and here <laughs> you can just put put things wherever you want it's absolute genius uh, let's get the other one up so now to test this let me go grab uh, grab my two lights all right let's shed some light there's my blue Here's my red. All right, what do you think? I can aim these a little bit. I mean, this, this is still kind of a flood light, so it's not gonna really go exactly where I want it to, but it will at least splash light across the wall, which is what I'm after. All right. And then when I wanna use the camera, I just pull this down. And wherever my, hold on, let me get this wire out of the way. This is gonna, this is gonna run up here out of the way. Uh, and then this will be wherever the, the camera goes. I can get this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Close-ups, rack view all the way out here. All right, I think this is gonna work. I think this is gonna work. All right, uh, that's it. That's all for the modular center. Uh, well, at least the lighting and the and the and the arms. Let me let me clean up. I'm gonna clean up the floor, clean up the baseboards, get all this dust out of here, and then uh, and then I'll introduce you to the desk I purchased as the modular center desk. All right. Be right back. I found this desk on Amazon. I think it was about 160 bucks, which is pretty spendy for how small and brittle it looks. <laughs> Although once it was all put together, it doesn't feel unstable. However, the modular is pretty heavy and all the stuff I'm gonna put on there. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. 
The selling point for it was that it was 54 inches across, which is more than enough for the big modular rack. Uh, it's got a little keyboard tray out here, which nicely fits the Arturia Keystep Pro. And it has this little riser here to put the big modular on top and then System 100 can sit down below it. At least for now, it seemed like a decent desk to use. Although I do already own a desk that's actually better for this. It's just not very comfortable to sit at. So let me go grab the modular and throw it on there and show you what it actually looks like. So there's this option with the big modular right in the center and the System 100 laying below it. Or I should probably call it the Behringer rack because it might not be the System 100 by the time I'm done moving things around. So this is, this is one option here. Let me set up another one. The other option is to, of course, employ the prototype C, I think that was. <laughs> the first time I put together a 6U 168HP case the one I used for the, for the most of 2021. Uh, so that, that's an option too. It also gives me some room to expand. I could put all the System 100 stuff in there or, or move the sequencer stuff down into it. But then we wind up with very limited desk space on either side of these modulars because they're 35 inches wide. It's only a 54 inch desk. I think it gives me nine and a half inches on each side. So let me throw the Behringer case back in there with some of the pedals and we'll see what that looks like. In here, of course, we have the, the big case, the Behringer case, uh, Cosmos, Microcosm, and Big Sky, and the Arturia Keystep, all in a nice little package, which is why I wanted to do this. Let's take a closer look. Let me move the camera in a little. So I think this is the modular center right here. This is the, the big custom case that I built with all the, uh, the main stuff in it. I've got, right now, the Behringer case has the System 100 stuff in it. It might stay like that, it might not. Uh, below that is this drawer for you know, sliding away the, the Arturia key step uh, when I'm not using it, which is most of the time. Uh, but then I also have this, this spot here for pedals. Uh, they don't quite fit. Again, the desk is just a little bit too short. I wish I had probably about eight more inches. Here's our two pedals, co Microcosm, Big Sky. Over yonder is the new Cosmos which is a little long, it's hanging off the end because again, I'm missing some inches, but that's okay. I just set up the, the two lights again, the, the red and the blue. I mounted the, uh, the iPhone camera. So for instance, if I wanted to talk about ornament and crime, uh, I can get this, uh, you know, the iPhone camera or the GoPro or something up in here really close, thanks to this arm. Or this arm can also swing way back here and actually get a, a shot down at the whole rack. Uh, this also affords me the opportunity to use black magic because I have all this room behind me over there to aim at the whole setup. I couldn't actually get this camera in anywhere, but now I think I can. So if I, if I ever get brave enough to do a live stream, for instance, I could probably aim this uh, like, like this. It's, it'll be far enough away. I could have a close-up cam, you know, right up, right up here. Uh, even something off to the other side over there. I don't know. There's... All kinds of room in this room. That's what I'm saying. There's all kinds of room. <laughs> so let me back this out a little bit and show you just, uh, just how much more wonderful this whole setup kind of is. So you can kind of see there is now a whole lot of room over there for the modular stuff. I think the modular is set up. I think that's where it's going to be. I'm going to get this wiring uh, you know, cleaned up and then that'll. this is a done project. Uh, coming up next will be getting the keyboards and the desk and everything all set up for the rest of this room. So let's give that a try and then we'll call it quits until the Tom and stuff gets here. 